Let us begin by defining one of the most important classes of functions in all of analysis, in fact in all of mathematics. These are the functions that are extensively used both within mathematics and outside mathematics in applications to physics etc. This is the definition of a smooth function. Definition a function f from a b to r is said to be said to be c infinity of a b or just smooth just smooth on a b if all derivatives of all orders if derivatives of all orders if derivatives of all orders of f exists and are continuous continuous in a b that means not only do the derivatives of f exist first derivative second derivative third derivative and so on they are continuous as well note that this continuity part is sort of redundant simply because if the derivative f3 exists at all points then f2 the second derivative is automatically continuous so on and so forth we could have just said that derivatives of all orders exist at all points that would be enough but i want to emphasize continuity also so i'm adding that okay now examples there are plenty since i said this is the most important examples polynomials are the good class of examples then what else what else nothing all the other functions that we have so far studied i have taken it for granted that you know the polynomial functions are the most general class of functions we have studied so far there are other examples there are sin x cos x e power x etc the so called elementary functions but so far i have just taken it for granted that these functions are defined and have the properties that you are familiar with we have so far not yet defined these functions precisely which is sort of going against the goal of this course to define everything precisely so how are we going to define these commonly used smooth functions well one idea motivated from the previous theorem about taylor which i have sketched is why don't we just write down the taylor series of e par x or sin x or cos x and try to see what happens well we already know that the characteristic property of e par x is that d par d by dx of e par x is equal to e par x and e par 0 is 1 okay e par 0 is 1 immediately if you start writing down the first few terms in the taylor series of this function e par x at the point 0 you will get that e par 0 which is 1 so e par x will be 1 plus then the first derivative of e par x is just e par x and at 0 it's 1 then you will just get 1 plus x okay then you will get x squared by 2 factorial because again second derivative of e par x is just e par x and at 0 it's just 1 plus x cube by 3 factorial plus dot 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 okay what i have done is i have taken the taylor's theorem that we have before that if you have a function that's k plus 1 smooth then you can write the function value at x as the values of f of 0 f prime of 0 f double prime of 0 that is essentially this taylor polynomial plus a remainder term what i'm doing is i'm throwing away the remainder term and making this an infinite series a question mark is which i should put a giant question mark here is this true is it really true that e par x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial plus so on okay that's the question if in fact it is true then we can just reverse engineer the whole damn thing and just start by saying that e par x is just this by definition okay we can just 
start our definition of e power x is this and then show that it has all the properties that characterize e power x namely these two okay now that's the idea now before that why would you even suspect that this right hand side this la infinite series is not equal to e power x why would you even have a doubt in the first place and that doubt comes because of the existence of many many peculiar smooth functions and that is one of the most famous functions in more advanced mathematics which is extensively used in the theory of manifolds this is called the bump function i mean this is not essentially the bump function the bump function can be constructed using this function but i am going to call it the bump function actually better terminology would be infinitely flat function infinitely flat function you will construct the bump function in the exercises using this infinitely flat function how is this function defined well let me just immediately begin with the lemma which will have the definition in it lemma the function the function f from r to r defined by defined by f of t is equal to e power minus 1 by t if t is greater than 0 and 0 if t is less than or equal to 0 is smooth okay this function which is defined in two pieces as e power minus 1 by t if t is greater than 0 and zero if t is less than or equal to zero is actually a smooth function a picture i urge you to draw a picture of this function will look something like this in the negative axis it's actually fully zero it's just fully zero but it is sort of infinitely flat at the origin it's sort of infinitely flat at the origin it attaches to this straight line that is nothing but the negative x axis in a smooth way so this function sort of becomes infinitely flat as you approach the origin from the right okay now what is this function trying to tell us well if you were to write down if you were to write down the taylor series of this function the infinite taylor series you are in for a shock because f prime of 0 f double prime of 0 and so on and so forth are all zero all the coefficients in this taylor expansion will be zero so if you were to write down the taylor series of this function you would get a giant zero which is obviously not equal to e power minus 1 by t which is what the function is when t is greater than zero so the taylor series of a smooth function might not have anything to do with the function we are getting a giant zero here whereas the function is e power minus 1 by t when t is greater than 0 so it is not always true that the taylor series the infinite taylor series that you just write down formally <coughs> will agree with the function that might not always happen let's first see a proof that this function is in fact smooth okay so all we have to do is that all uh, we only need to check we only need to check only need to check that all derivatives all derivatives or better yet derivatives of all orders derivatives of all orders exist at zero okay the reason is that 1 by x is a continuous function 1 by x is in fact smooth function is a smooth function outside outside of 0 and so is so is exponential so is exponential let me just write 1 by t 1 by t or rather in our case minus 1 by t and so is exponential therefore exponential power 1 uh, exponential of minus 1 by t which is going to be a composition of smooth functions will be smooth which you can prove by induction 
it's an easy argument to show that e power minus 1 by t will be smooth everywhere except the origin. The origin is the only problematic point where two different functions are uh, being joined. Of course, what I said uh, about e power minus 1 by t being smooth applies only to t greater than 0. For t less than 0, you don't have to do any work. It's just the identically constant function 0. So the only problematic point is the origin, is the origin. First of all, first of all, first of all, e power minus 1 by t converges to 0 as t goes to 0. This is just a well-known property of the exponential, well-known property of exponential function. Okay, this means the given function f, the given function f is continuous, continuous at 0. At least we are off to a good start. Continuity follows easily. Okay. Now, we have to show that the function f is actually differentiable at the origin. We have to show that it is differentiable at the origin. If at all the function is going to be differentiable at the origin, the derivative has to be 0. That is very clear because the function is identically 0 whenever t is less than 0. Okay. So, when t is greater than 0, when t is greater than 0, d by dt of e power minus 1 by t is just minus 1 by t e power, uh, sorry, this is not correct, it is just e power uh, minus 1 by t into d by dt of minus 1 by t, which is 1 by t square. Okay. We now have the following claim, claim for t greater than 0, the kth derivative, kth derivative of f is of the form, of the form t k of t times e power minus 1 by t by t power 2 k. Okay, where, where p k of t is some polynomial, some polynomial. We have already dealt with the base case, that is what d by dt of e power minus 1 by t equal to e power minus 1 by t into 1 by t squared is essentially saying. What I am saying now is that this is true for all derivatives. So, assume, assume by inductive hypothesis. Assume by inductive hypothesis, hypothesis that that f n of t is actually of the form p k of p n of t times e power minus 1 by t by t power 2 n. Okay? Now, we will have to show the same thing for the n plus 1th derivative. So, f n plus 1 the derivative at t is going to be nothing but p n prime of t times e power minus 1 by t by t power 2 n. I am applying the product rule first plus p n of t into the derivative e power minus 1 by t by t power 2 n prime. Okay? Now, how do you differentiate this? This is just going to be, I will just concentrate on this term e power minus 1 by t minus 1 by t by t power 2 n the derivative of this this is going to be nothing but e power minus 1 by t minus 1 by t divided by 2 power 2 n plus 2 i am essentially divide, uh, uh, differentiating the numerator which is e power minus 1 by t which is going to give minus of 1 by t squared and another minus sign both will get cancelled. So, I will get 1 by t squared. This 1 by t squared I am attaching to the denominator plus the derivative of 1 by t power 2 n. Okay? That is going to be minus, uh, uh, it is going to be minus, minus 2 n t p k of t, uh, um, no, that p k of t is not it here, minus 2 n t 
times e power minus 1 by t divided by minus 1 by p divided by 2 t power 2 into n plus 1. Okay. So, please, please check this. Please check. Please check. Please check. Okay. So, I have just differentiated 1 by t power 2n and we get this. Okay. Now, what does all this give us? It is going to give that f n plus 1 the derivative at t is nothing but t squared p n prime of p plus p n of t minus 2 k 2 n t p n of t the whole multiplied by e power minus 1 by t by t power 2 n plus 1. Okay. So, these, this is just a routine computation. Please check or check the notes for all the details worked out. Okay. So, we have proved this, we have proved the claim. We have proved the claim by induction. Prove the claim by induction. So, now we exactly know how f n plus 1 of t at t greater than 0 is going to look like. Okay. Now, what is our aim is another claim which is going to be proved again by induction. Claim is that f k of 0 exists and is equal to 0 which is what we want to show which is equal to 0. Okay. Obviously, if f k of 0 exists, it is got to be equal to 0 because the left hand derivative when you take just derivative from the left, it is going to be 0 because that function is just identically 0 when t is less than 0. Okay. So, what we have to do is to show that when you take the derivative from the right, you still get 0 for this to work. Okay. So, assume, so assume again, assume again by induction, induction that, that f k of 0 is equal to 0, uh, f n, f n of 0 is equal to 0. Assume that you have shown this. Okay. So, let me just make a remark if this is continue, if this is confusing, this is for k greater than or equal to 0. Okay. We have already shown that f of 0 equal to 0. So, the base case is essentially done. Recall that when you put f 0, you just mean f. When you put f 0, f 0 is just another thing for f. Okay. So, you have you are taking f n of 0 and we want to show that it is going to be, we are assuming that it is going to be 0 and we want to compute the n plus 1th derivative of f at the origin. Again, what you do is, this is nothing but f n of t minus f n of 0 divided by t limit t going to 0 plus. This is nothing but the definition of the derivative from the right at the origin. We already know that f n of 0 equal to 0 by induction hypothesis. So, this is just limit t going to 0 plus of f n of t divided by t. Now, you might understand why we tried to claim that f n of t is of a particular form. We know that f n of t, this is going to be of a particular form. What is f n of t? This is just p n of t e power minus 1 by t divided by t power 2 k divided by t. That is what the expression inside is going to be. Okay? So, this is just p k of t times e power minus 1, uh, not k, this is n, this is n, p k of t e power minus 1 by t by t power 2 n plus 1, okay, okay. Now, set 1 by t to be equal to some x, set 1 by t to be equal to x. So, this entire expression will just become p k of 1 by x 
t power 2k sorry x power x power 2k plus 1 divided by divided by e power x divided by e power x and now we have to compute limit x going to plus infinity of this we have to compute limit x going to plus infinity of this term okay but this was already given as an exercise you have already solved you have already shown you have already shown that that as x goes to infinity this quantity this this converges to zero converges to zero okay this is one of the exercises which was first given just for sequences in the chapter on sequences is again for functions in the chapter on continuity and limits okay so this this first term goes to zero okay and this polynomial as x approaches infinity 1 1, one by x approaches zero so this is going to go to some fixed constant so this whole thing converges to zero this whole thing converges to zero the net upshot of all this is that the right hand derivative the right hand derivative right hand derivative of f exists of all orders right hand derivative of all orders of all orders of f exists and is zero and is zero so the net upshot is this is a smooth function the function f is smooth is smooth yet all derivatives of f at the origin are just zero which means when you write down the Taylor series, you will get a giant zero. So it is not true that if you have a smooth function and you write down its Taylor series, infinite Taylor series, you get anything useful. It is not always the case that you will get anything useful. So now we are going to begin the topic of power series. We are going to study the general situation under which it happens that the Taylor series does in fact converge to the given function then we are going to reverse engineer and define exponential and trigonometric some uh, trigonometric functions directly using these power series and prove that they have the basic properties that they indeed have we have taken it for granted uh, whatever properties we have taken it for granted we are going to prove that they indeed have those properties this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on smooth functions and taylor series